All right, hello and welcome back to my 2.5D RPG in the Unity tutorial. Uh, today we are going to be covering uh, level transitions, so we will enter one level from another and come out in a completely different place, so let's just show you that. And I'm going to talk a bit about uh, preparing for serialization, so serialization, serialization, sorry, it's basically just writing data so you can store it and then load it so it's basically just saving and loading and since we're in an rpg there's a hell of a lot of stuff that we're gonna have to save and load so i'll be talking about that and showing you how i'm going to go about it but that'll probably come next episode so yeah uh first up i'll just show you the uh transitioning between environments so first off we can just equip items so here so you can see that we've got the assault rifle we'll just maximize that and if we press e we can go here to the dead city and you can see that we are in a completely different environment. And there's NPCs and shit walking around. And if you didn't know, uh, watch the bonus video I put out last week. Uh, these little white nodes are basically nodes from tar maps, which I used to uh, I used to make a new environment, basically. So the, so go watch that. So yeah, tar map, uh, A star pathfinding from uh, tar maps was a new video I put out last week. Yeah, last week. So go watch that. It's a bonus one. So yeah, let's go see how it all works. And I know it just looks like it's uh, loading a scene, but there's a tiny bit more to it. Just for okay. So just first up is a couple of changes to the actions. Uh, basically, I wanted to change how the pathfinding worked. Uh, so basically, now uh, oh my God, I didn't change it here. Uh, what it does is when the NPC is following a path, it will look towards, so the direction it faces will be the path counter plus one, so it'll be the next node in the path, whereas it will move towards the uh, current node. Uh, this basically stops a bug where the NPC would just sort of jitter uh, between two points, not really move anywhere, and it allows us to get a lot closer to the nodes, which stops uh, NPCs grinding along uh, objects which were next to unwalkable nodes, which is always good. And again, this is on the home player, so uh, we decide we move towards the path found, path counter, but we decide direction to face, path counter plus one. And on the remote map, you'll see that again. There we go, I'm just going to debug, by the way. Get rid of that. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so now onto the. Oh wait, was there somewhere else? No. Nope. All right. So first up is the uh, player level transition data store. Uh, as unwieldy as the name sounds, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, it is a script on the player game object. So we click here. You can see it here. So basically, it has two vari uh, two strings and a list of Game objects, oh, scripts, sorry, past travel locations. Uh, basically, it's a string for level to load, which will be the scene name, and the location start ID, which is a string, which will be basically a reference to which, uh, to a point in the scene where the actual player will come out at if they went into that uh, point. So, you know, like you can have uh, multiple entrances to a point, so that just allows you to come out in one of several points in a level. So very good. Uh, basically, as well as a singleton, so we can reference it. Uh, so on awake, we set level to load to just be empty. And if me is null, then we set to me as this. And to preserve, to easily preserve the uh, player game objects between scenes, so that means like stuff like the inventory and you know ammo and health and stats and whatnot won't change between scenes. Uh, we basically call don't destroy and load with this game object. Uh, passing this dot game objects as an argument. Uh, this basically says that we don't destroy the game object when we load another scene, uh, and then we can use the level transition to change the player's position to make sure it's usable in the next scene and it's not just like off out in the middle of nowhere. And that is how we get the uh, level transition. And if me is null because we only ever need one of these, uh, then we just destroy this game object because that means there's like a doppelganger of the player and. Should it get weird? 
Next up, we don't need these, so we'll get rid of them. Oh, sorry. It's early today. I've got shit to do, so I had to record this in the morning. Uh, set level transition 2 is also a method which basically just sets the level that we are wanting to go to. So this would be like when we press E next to a transition point, it calls this method with the level to load and the location starting, the start location ID. It'll store these two variables, it will check if the level needs unlocking, which I'll go over in a minute, and it will then call scene manager.loadscene with the uh, scene name. Uh, and to use the scene manager, we need to import uh, using well, using Unity Engine scene management, uh, and basically, we also have uh, a number of fast travel locations uh, as a separate thing. I'll show you these. So basically, you'll see in the uh, player transition, player level transition day. I really should have had a better name for that, but whatever. Uh, basically, we've got a list of locations. So we've got a fast travel uh, location script here. So it basically just stores uh, whether the uh, level to load, the location start ID, a little map texture, and a fast travel unlocked. Uh, I was planning to do a uh, like a fast travel as well. So you press a button, and then you get a list of locations you've been to, and then you click, and you can just instantly travel to them. I decided against that because it would just be me drawing another button and clicking a button and then calling the exact same code, so I decided it wasn't really worth it because I'd be redoing all the GUI anyway, but yeah. So basically you could like draw a button for the Plague Desert and fast travel there. That's what that is. And what this does is it checks if when we're transitioning to another level, if we haven't unlocked the uh, that level, so if it's equal to if the scene is equal to level to load, or the string in that uh, fast travel location is equal to level to load, then we set fast travel unlocked to true. So you have to actually, so you would have to actually go to a place to uh, to unlock it, basically. Uh, next up is a level transition. Uh, these are the objects that basically control how you get from one scene to another. Uh, we get a string for my ID. Uh, this is basically just the ID for uh, deciding where the player starts in the level. Sorry. Uh, we're string for level to load, which is uh, uh, basically the scene to load. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm not a morning person. Uh, level to load, level I load, sorry, is just the scene that gets loaded. And the ID into load is the uh, ID of the location of where the player will start when the, that scene is loaded. So it's essentially my ID, but on the other side of the scene. On the other scene, sorry. And we'll play in it, it's false. Uh, so basically on void start, so if player level, so basically if the location start ID in player level transition data store is equal to my ID, then basically what we do is we set the player's position to transform the opposite, this start transform, but position uh, we set its location start ID to be null because we don't need it anymore. And we generate nodes using the new uh, create nodes from tar maps, which I went over in that, my last bonus video. So I will have that in the playlist and you can go watch that and you can all marvel at my genius being able to look at compare two tar maps. But yeah. Uh, next up on update, we have a uh, player near is equal to vector 3.distance transformed opposition of this game object and the player. And if that distance is less than true, 2, it will return true, otherwise, it returns false. Uh, so, uh, reason for this is. Uh, sorry. Uh, 
the reason I did it like this instead of say having a vector free dot distance call here and here is basically just to save a call. Really, we only need to call it once here and then cache the result, and then we can reference it in both input and on GUI. So basically, what uh, input does is waits for the player to be nearby, and if the player presses E, then it will transition to the specified level. And if they are and on GUI, if the player is near, then it will draw a box saying press E to go to level I load. And that's pretty much it. And now, finally, uh, I'm basically just going to show you the start of serialization stuff. Because uh, basically, what we do need to do is find a way to sort of write all the data. Uh, that we have so so like NPC inventories, positions, quest states, uh, stats, all that kind of shit. We need to find a way to write that all into a file, uh, and then uh, be able to parse it from the file again, so so we can load it. Uh, and that's what I basically started doing here. So this is basically just one example, and I'll have them all done for next week. But yeah, basically what we wanted to do is having. Uh, sort of databases of like items and prefabs and stuff. So basically this is just an item database where we can pass in the name of an item and we can get it. Uh, so it just searches through a list of prefabs and gets the item name. And if it's equal to the one passed in, it returns it. But yeah. So we're going to have to do that for for everything basically, as well as having a way to. Oh, God. What are we doing? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, as well as having a way to uh, describe, like, to write it as a string. So basically, if we wanted to describe an inventory, uh, no, don't want to do that. Sorry. Uh, we might have uh, water, bread ammo and stuff like that so basically just write the inventory there and we'd have say a reference to the inventory so player container and yeah so basically what we'll be doing next time is just writing uh methods to write our data to something like this that where we can just easily write it as a string and then take the data back in and sort of create stuff in the world based on it so yeah that's what we'll be doing next time. Uh, just a quick demo. Again, so likewise, we can I'll just pick up items to show you that stuff's consistent. So yeah. Uh, <sighs> so yeah, start on one level. Just here, press E. We go to another level. And hey presto. We can transition between levels in a way that we can record where we've been and have fast travel locations. So yeah, uh, cheers for watching. Uh, go check out Loud or Quiet, which is the game I have made myself. It's on Steam now. It's read good, I promise. And cheers for watching. Next time will be serialization, which will be a fun uh, hole to go down. Yeah, so thanks for watching and goodbye.